So Thanksgiving is right around the corner now. We don't want you to stress out about it. So today we're sharing our top 10 easiest Thanksgiving recipes. So you might have noticed that you don't get to see a lot of the sisters. It's because we all kind of live far away from each other. So I thought it would be fun if each sister filmed one of their favorite easy Thanksgiving recipes so we can share them with you. But really fast before I jump in, I wanna do a quick introduction to my friend Tara from Living on a Dime. Now I met Tara at a YouTube conference and we just clicked. Now over on her channel, she's showing you what to do with your Thanksgiving leftovers and teaching you how to make them into delicious meals. All right guys. Thanksgiving recipes, let's go. The first recipe we're making today is our pistachio jello salad. Now this only takes about five minutes to throw together and it's ready to go. All right, the first thing you need is pistachio jello. Now this is instant pudding. You wanna make sure you get instant. Next, we're gonna just have some pineapple tidbits, some Cool Whip, yes, bananas and marshmallows. That's all you need. All right, first thing we're gonna add is the pistachio jello just into the bottom of the bowl. Next, we're gonna add just our pineapple juice, not the pineapple yet. Then you're just going to whisk it up really good till it's nice and smooth. Next is my favorite part, the Cool Whip. If you've been around for a while, you know how much I love it. <laughs> so we're just gonna add eight ounces of Cool Whip, so like a whole little container. Then you're just going to slowly, <laughs> not slowly, but mix in all the pudding with the Cool Whip. And if you need to grab a spoon, it might make it a little bit easier than a whisk to mix all together. So now you have like your base. We're gonna add the good stuff inside. So we have the rest of the pineapple. We use the juice, now we just want the pineapple. We like to add marshmallows. So on the recipe, it calls for two cups of marshmallows and we're just gonna kind of eyeball this. If you need more marshmallows, go for it. All right, and then we just have two bananas that we're just going to cut into little slices. I like to make them pretty small, so they're bite size. But yeah, right into the bowl. Now it's time to carefully mix this all together. Warning, you will want a little bit bigger bowl just because there is a lot. This makes quite a bit. All right, guys, this is done. And that is it. I love that it just takes five minutes. You don't even have to wait for it to set up. You could serve it right now. Hey, I'm Steph, and the next recipe we're making is slow cooker creamed corn. Okay, to the slow cooker, you're going to add 32 ounces of corn, half a cup of butter, I sliced this up, then half a cup of milk, one tablespoon of sugar, salt and pepper to taste, and then you're going to add eight ounces of cream cheese. Once you've added the cream cheese, I chop mine up into little blocks. You put your lid on and cook for two to four hours on high or four to six hours on low. Once it's all mixed together, sprinkle on some fresh thyme and then serve it. Hi everybody, I'm Camille and our next recipe is make ahead mashed potatoes. This is our most popular potato recipe for Thanksgiving and it's so nice to make them the day before. So. We're gonna start with three pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. Now, if you don't have Yukon Gold, you can use any kind. These are just my favorite to use in mashed potatoes, but you're gonna put them in a big pot and you're gonna fill that pot with water um, just so it covers all the potatoes. You'll put the lid on top and then we're gonna take it over to the stove and we're gonna boil this over medium high heat or medium heat for 20 to 25 minutes so that those potatoes can get soft. Okay, the potatoes have boiled for 20 to 25 minutes. They're super soft, so I drain the water. And now we're just gonna take a potato masher and mash them up. You can do this in a separate bowl. I sometimes just do it in the pan that they were already in. Now, it didn't take long to mash them up because they were so soft. You can also peel these potatoes, but I chose not to. We're gonna just add a little bit of ingredients to make these nice and creamy. So I have half a block of cream cheese, so four ounces cream cheese, and two tablespoons of butter. You can put those in. I also have two thirds cup of sour cream. Dump that right in, and then I'm gonna add some milk. Now, I like to use whole milk because it makes them super creamy. I'm gonna add a quarter cup, but really any, kind, any type of milk will work. And then the last thing, I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. You can do more or less, however much you want. Sometimes I like to add in some garlic powder too, just whatever seasonings you like for potatoes. Um, because the potatoes are so hot, 
everything is just kind of melting really fast. These are going to be so creamy and so good. Okay, as soon as you get them all mashed to the consistency that you want, you can make these as smooth and creamy as you want, or if you kind of like them to be chunky, that works too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in a nine by 13 pan. So I've got my nine by 13 here. Now, once you get them all in the pan, you're gonna cover them with foil and you can stick these right in your fridge. Um, I usually like to do this the day before I need them, like for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, I'll make them the day before. When it's time to cook, you'll pull these out of the fridge 30 minutes before you want to cook them and let them sit, kind of come to room temperature. And then you'll cook them at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. Sometimes I sprinkle just a tiny bit of paprika on top. If you want to, you can add some more butter on top. You can add some green onions. Um, fresh parsley looks good, but you just bake them and they turn out soft and creamy, just like you made them that very same day. So it's perfect if you're trying to save room in your oven and save you a little bit of time on your busy holiday. So there they are, make ahead mashed potatoes. They're delicious. Hi, it's Lauren, and the next recipe we are going to make is a classic green bean casserole. This is a staple on the Thanksgiving dinner table, and if you've never made this before, you're going to be surprised at how easy it is to throw together. For this recipe, I'm starting with one can of cream of mushroom soup, a fourth a cup of milk, and then just a fourth a teaspoon or a little sprinkle of pepper. I'm going to mix all of this together until it's well blended and whisked together before I add in the other ingredients. Once your soup is whisked together and all creamy, you're going to add in two cans of green beans. Make sure to drain those before you add them in. And then I'm going to add two thirds a cup of French's fried onions. Now I'm just going to mix all of this delicious goodness together. After you have folded together the green beans with the soup, you're going to pour it into a nine by nine pan and just spread it out a little bit. We are going to bake this at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. After you've baked your casserole for about 30 minutes, you'll then sprinkle more of the French fried onions just right on top. I'm gonna place it back into the oven for about five to 10 minutes until they get nice and crispy, and then we are ready to go. This is always a favorite on the Thanksgiving table, and we know that your family is going to love it too. Hi, I'm Sid, the mom of the six sisters, and the next recipe we are going to make is grandma's five cup creamy fruit salad. So let's get started. The first ingredient we're gonna add, is just so easy, it's just five ingredients, is um, an 11 ounce can of mandarin oranges drained, and then eight ounces of crushed pineapple drained. I'm just gonna add all of this into the bowl. Two cups of min miniature marshmallows, one cup of sweetened shredded coconut, and then one cup of sour cream. And I know you might think, oh, sour cream, but trust me, it is so good. And then, just going to mix all of this together. You might want to mix a gently because um, you don't want these mandarin oranges to break up too much. So and this salad comes together so fast, but the secret is you can eat it right after you make it, but it really is best when it's refrigerated for about two to three hours. That way the sour cream will be sweetened up a little bit by the fruit. And then it's just the perfect blend of sweetness with the sour cream, the tanginess of the tanginess of the sour cream. Guys, it's so good. I married into the family, and this was the big recipe it during the holidays, and it's so good. So there you have it, Grandma's five cup creamy fruit salad. All right, the next recipe we're making is homemade cranberry sauce. Now I know you can get cranberry sauce at the store, but this only takes about 12 minutes to throw together and it tastes so much better. So the first thing you need is fresh cranberries. You can use frozen if you want to, but highly suggest the fresh. And then if you, have, if you use fresh, make sure that you wash and rinse before using them. Then we have some Simply Orange, orange juice. I love Simply Orange and then sugar. And you guys, that's it, so easy. So in a medium saucepan, you want to add one cup of sugar 
and then three fourths cup of orange juice. And we're just gonna keep this on medium high heat, mix it around until all the sugars are dissolved. All right, all the sugar is dissolved. Now we're just gonna add in our cranberries. Just pour them right in. Okay, so we're just going to mix these for about 10 minutes until the berries start to pop. Now we're on medium high heat. Keep continuing to stir, it's gonna be good. All right, if you guys can see, oh, it's starting to pop and bubbly and it's looking good. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. There are still some berries in there that are whole, so you can just smash them if you want to, but I actually like to leave them pretty whole. They, they taste good, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and transfer this to a bowl. We want this to cool down because as it cools, it's gonna thicken up. All right, I've let it sit out for a little while. It is now thick and oh man, ready to put on my turkey. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Kendra, and the next recipe that we are going to be making today is cucumber salad. Okay, I'm gonna get started on this recipe. This is our cucumber salad, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add in two cucumbers that I have peeled and chopped, and then I'm going to add about two and a half cups of tomatoes, which I have halved. And I love this recipe because it's great for summer when it's hot and you don't wanna turn on the oven, but I also love this for winter when there's lots of holiday parties and you don't have any oven space to do side dishes, this is also a great one. So the next thing I'm gonna add is about two tablespoons of red onion that I have chopped and then some avocado, I'll add this in. You can do as much or as little as you want and the recipe calls for two, but you could do one or two. We love avocado in our house, so we usually do quite a bit of avocado. So I'll add in the avocado, stir it around a little bit, and then I will add in feta cheese. We love feta cheese in our family, so I'm gonna add a little bit more than what the recipe calls for, but I'm just gonna stir this in. If you don't like feta cheese, you could also do a mozzarella cheese. And then I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper, sprinkle that on top, mix it in. And I love this because the dressing is so simple. It's just two quick, easy ingredients. We have two tablespoons of olive oil I'll drizzle on top, and then one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. So I'll just add that on top. Up next is our three ingredient Parmesan rolls. For this recipe, you need 12 frozen dinner rolls, a half a cup of butter, I like salted butter, and then one cup of Parmesan cheese. Now I microwave my butter in a microwave safe bowl and we're going to dip the frozen roll, it's totally frozen, into the butter. Mix it around a little bit, then you're gonna go straight into the Parmesan. Mix it, if you need to press Parmesan onto it, you can. Then you're going to put it into a nine by 13 pan that has been sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. Now you're just going to continue this step until all 12 rolls are onto your pan. Now these rolls need to rise, so we're going to cover them with saran wrap and put them in a warm place. I like to put them kind of in the sun or just a spot where it's gonna be warm so they will rise a little faster. Now once they are doubled in size, go ahead and put them in the oven. You're gonna cook them at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes or until they are golden brown on top. I like to serve this with just a little bit of butter and it's the perfect side dish. Now our next recipe is a little bit healthier. It's our Instant Pot Green Beans. All right, next recipe, we're going to make some beans. So I have two tablespoons of butter, one cup of water, one pound of green beans, and then on top of the green beans, I'm gonna add just a little bit, like a teaspoon of garlic and go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure it's all the way tight. You're gonna turn it again to sealing so it will pressurize, and you're gonna go all the way down to five minutes. Now, I cook mine for five and they're really well done. You can even do two minutes and they'll still be good. Now, when it shows the L, that means that the timer is done and you're ready to let the steam out. So that's called a quick release. So I turn the little knob. Once all the pressure is out, my lid will come off and my beans are ready to go. So all I have to do is mix them around a little bit. Now one of my favorite things is when the garlic pressurizes, it kind of pressurizes the garlic flavor into all of the beans. It's one of my most favorite things to make. So these beans are done and we are all ready to serve. So I like to serve them in 
Just a serving dish, individual bowls, however you like to do it. And the last recipe is our three ingredient avocado salad. You just need two avocados, a little bit of little tomatoes, and then a jar of artichokes. Go ahead and chop up your tomatoes. I like to make them into small bite-sized pieces. And go ahead and dump those into your serving bowl. Next, we're gonna cut up the avocados. I also like to put these, cut these into small bite-sized pieces because you don't want a huge bite of avocado and nothing else. Next, we're gonna chop up some artichokes, depending on how many you like. This is a large jar of artichokes. I'm cutting up about half of them. Now for a little bit more flavor, I like to add a little bit of the liquid that artichokes were sitting in and then just mix it up. This recipe is my go-to side dish. Now, if you need more Thanksgiving ideas, we actually have a 175 recipe ebook on our app. I'll put a link down below for you. Or you can check out some of our other Thanksgiving videos. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.